Hello, my name is Kieran Rayworth, and today we're going to take a look and create a domain controller. So, what a domain controller does is, is it provides computers to all be able to connect to each other across a network on a domain. And the service allows computers to access a certain amount of information host several user accounts and even be a file server and print server which is also one of the roles that we've created so here what we're going to do is we're going to unlock our computer right. okay so we just close these windows from our previous video so there's many ways of creating a domain controller. One of the first ways is manage your server, which is by clicking start, manage your server. What this does is, this is a main page for showing you what roles you have configured on your server, um, and things like that. It allows you to manage the roles, like here is manage file server, and things like that. I can also add remove a role which takes me to the configure your server wizard which is basically very the same and so I select next and blah 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 another way we can create a domain controller is by going run type in DC promo and this brings up the active directory installation wizard and it takes you step by step into to install an active directory. You have to do this yourself instead of the server doing this for you. So <coughs> I'm going to choose the DC Primo Wizard because it's a lot easier of getting what you want done. So we select next to continue. Now what this page does here is it tells you about the operating system compatibility compatibility so if you're running servers that are running Windows NT4 server or earlier you might not be able to connect your server to this domain but computers like Windows 98, 2000, XP and Vista you have no problems so we select next what we're going to do is we're going to create a new domain controller for a new domain so we select next I have a new domain and a new forest. So a new forest is the place where all domains are held together. So you might want a new domain in an existing domain forest. So what we're going to do is we're going to select domain and new forest. Now here this is where we type our full DNS name so that clients will be able to connect to this domain and recognize that it is actually part of this network. So we're going to say my domain dot local. Click next. This is just an example name. It doesn't represent anything at this time. Now what this is going to do is it's going to bring you to a net BIOS name. So you're not going to have the full domain name not my domain dot local. The server will change it to my domain. So we select next. That's fine. Here is the Active Directory folders. This is where the Active Directory folders are going to be stored, and these will be shared at some point during the installation. Select Next. Here's the logs of Active Directory. So select Next. I'm going to change this. Right here is the point where we reach the screen that says Diagnostic Fail. This is that we haven't got a DNS server installed and it hasn't been configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select install and configure DNS server on this computer and set the computer to use the DNS server and its preferred DNS server. Select next. Permissions are compatible only with Windows 2000 server and Windows Server 2003 operating system. Select next. Now here is a password so if you don't want this server to become a domain controller anymore we can restore it and take it away. It's recommended that you don't use your administrator's password. 
use a different password from your administrator password select next and select next again here we're going to conclude we're going to continue our installation